And it's time uh, to take a break with our Fatimite Cairo, with the Fatimite dynasty, and the main features of uh, this period. We are very much delighted to have with us our historian who is going to tell us more about the Fatimite Cairo, Mr. Samir Abbas, uh, who is going, as I said, to tell us the details about this period of our history. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. I'm glad to be with you. Good morning, Mr. Abbas, and uh, let's first talk about the uh, Fatimite uh, um, era and the origin of that particular important uh, era in the history of uh, Cairo. So talking about the Fatimid, we are talking about nearly uh, 10th century uh, AD, which is nearly a history dates back to 1,000 years ago. Mm. So Cairo itself dates back to 1,400 years ago. So 400 years before the Fatimid, Cairo mm. was exist already, but in different names. Mm. Cairo wasn't, uh, wasn't used uh, until the Fatimid. So it was Al-Fustat, Al-Askar, al qadaa That's in the time when the, when the Rashidi uh, Khalifa, was ruling the Abbasid and Ptolemaid as well. And then there was a new power with a new philosophy came from, uh, came from the west, uh, the northwest coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. And they called themselves the Fatimite. Originally, they mm -hmm. descends from Fat uh, Fatma, which is the daughter of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And or that's how they introduce themselves anyway. They fail to introduce their uh, Shia teachings uh, mm. in uh, Saudi Arabia, and that's why they fled to uh, the west, northwest coast of Africa, introducing their teaching there and building a very strong army from uh, different tribes in this area, led by uh, a Greek, uh, a Greek general. Mm -hmm. uh, from Sicily, which uh, he's, he was named, he converted into Islam and named our, as uh, named Jarrus. If you want to say something about, uh, something about this map, sir? So, the, the, this map is a map of historical Cairo, mm -hmm. which is, uh, the part we are talking about is the northeast part of this map, which is mm -hmm. the Fatimite Cairo. There is an interesting story behind choosing uh, the location of Cairo today as the capital of Egypt uh, after the Arabs made it into Egypt. So Alexandria was the capital already before that, and, uh, and the challenge was to find a new location away from the sea because the Arabs in that time, they were not professional in fighting in the sea and in the ocean. And the challenge was to find a good place, very well protected, close from the Nile Valley, and uh, have an easy access to the desert route to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the location of Cairo, which is, uh, when you look at the map, it is the shortest distance from the Nile Valley to across the eastern desert to the Red Sea and Sinai to Saudi Arabia is in Cairo today. So there was three different quarters has been built, uh, as I mentioned, al Fustat, al Askar, and Qata'a. And then in the 10th century, the Fatimites decided to build a new capital mm -hmm. or a new royal city. It was built as a royal city only for them and their army. Very well fortified. This is almost one square kilometer. Mm -hmm. And with nine gates, three of them still mm -hmm. exist until today, al Fatuh, mm -hmm. al Nasr, and Zuwail Gate. Al Fatuh and Nasr in the far north and Zuwail in the far south. And the distance between the north gates and the south gates is one kilometer. Mm -hmm. So um, it was built by the army leader, which is Jawher Sekuli from mm -hmm. Sicily, the Greek, the Greek man. And it became as a royal city with two palaces and uh, the area in between known as the Palace Walk, which is in Arabic we call Bin Asrin, which is, that yeah. was one of the famous novels of Nakim Mahfouz. Uh, the Fatimite history in Egypt is an interesting history because uh, the, tent, the tent or their plan was to introduce a new religious teachings and to help them in introducing the new religious teachings that was an other university. An other Muslim university was built mainly by the Fatimite family to encourage or to um, uh, introduce Shia teachings uh, in Egypt in that time. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, not only Al-Azhar and the mosque and the palaces they built and the new quarter, and by the way, the new quarter which is, has an interesting names of the streets, which is, they are not even come from an Arabic background. They come, they named after the tribes of the Moroccan and Algerian tribes, which has formed the armies there. So they tend to put every division of the army in different areas along this, uh, along this street, which is El Maize Street. Uh, a nickname of El Maize Street, by the way, is Ali 1000, because it is 1000 year old. Yeah. Now. So. Until the moment, Al Muaz Street uh, or Shara Al Muaz in Cairo is one of the main features when it comes to Islamic Cairo. 
uh, not only one of the main features is also a world of heritage sites, UNESCO heritage sites. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I have been there in the l almost two days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, there is, uh, you know, so the map, the, the map which is sh on the monitor now is showing uh, like the one kilometer street from mm -hmm. Al-Fatuh Gate to Zuwela Gate, which is called the Moise Street. Mm -hmm. So in Moise Street, divide into different sections. So there is a north section, which is starts from Bab al-Fatuh, has the famous mosque of Al-Hakim Mosque, which is almost a thousand year old, that was built by one, one of the Fatimid kings as well. And going along the street, you know, there is not much Fatimid monuments remains mm -hmm. today, unless, except for Al-Akmar Mosque, that's another famous mosque along the street, built around 1125. And some, many of their monuments has been replaced by buildings and mosques built by the Mamluks after that. Right, but uh, as we are enjoying uh, the holy month of Ramadan, uh, the beautiful story that is related to the Fatimite era, which is the arrival of the Fatimite commander and how people received him with the uh, lanterns back then in time. And from that particular day, the uh, Ramadan lantern emerged, or the story of That's the, very how much can true. You relate if you like to elaborate on that particular phase. You know, that's very much true. You know, there is many, many things which is associated with Ramadan today, how we celebrate Ramadan. This comes from the Fatimite period, including the lantern, including the desserts as well, and ev even including the big banquets, which is in the streets and the big tents made for these banquets. And that's the why... The lecture tents, like the ones here, is also related to that. I mean, the texture and the writing. You know, so there is an area known as the tent makers, which is that is to the south of Babzuela, mm -hmm. and tent makers has been encouraged by, or this industry has been encouraged by the Fatimites to build these big tents, very richly decorated, like the one you are pointing now. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, this one is printed; the other one is like in embroidery, you know, like. Uh, Embroidered. You know, exactly, in yeah. more details, and that was encouraged in order to give to make big banquets to attract people's attention to come to invite them to come and eat and try the dessert. So the point is, what is the reason behind that, especially for the big banquets? That was, an, that was a way, at, for a political reason mainly, and that was a way to attract people's attention, to invite them to come so they can, uh, in, they can introduce their new religious teachings among them. And that is the main reason, the political reason of, uh, of having these big banquets and having the tent. And, uh, and the lantern has a different story. That was. Um, al Muaz, which is when he arrived in Egypt, he was the king of the Fatimites, and that was by the night. And that's, he was encouraged the army and encouraged the people as well to take these lanterns, like which is lit by oil mm -hmm. or candles, to celebrate him and to welcome him and light the route from the <laughs> Futuh gate all the way to his palace, which is in the heart of the street. Mm. Also, Mr. Abbas, it, there was a mix between <coughs> science, between literature, I mean, Poetry played a role when it comes to the Fatimid dynasty, also science when, when it comes to uh, uh, great Islamic scientists like Ibn al-Haytham or Ibn al-Nafis who discovered a lot and who served humanity mm. uh, uh, since then with their very humble um, uh, facilities that they had. And uh, also, uh, uh, we are not going to miss uh, Melukiya or the royal dish which mm. we are now calling it Mulukhiya mm. uh, and Al-Hakim Amr Allah who was uh, that famous of just doing some weird things or uh, having orders to the people, directives to the people which is saying that he was not that much sane as a leader or as a, 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 a Khalifa, uh, as an, a, an emir or a, a prince for the Muslims by then. What are all these contradictions, if you want to elaborate? In uh, Al-Hakim, uh, from a history point of view, there is lots of interesting stories left behind of how mm -hmm. weird character he is. And, and some of these stories might be exaggerated by his oppositions, which is ruled ruled after him. Mm -hmm. But some of these stories, for example, that he, uh, he closed all of, the, um, all of the workshops or all of the sandals, sh like shoes workshops, producing sandals for women to make sure that they will not make it out to the street. Mm. So, and he wasn't favorite, as you mentioned, as he wasn't a favorite of some certain dishes, which is like a mulukhiya, and he banned that from being uh, yeah. cooked at all, or uh, even being cultivated. And there is also another, in the tradition, there is also another story, as she did with al-Hakim, mm. that 
uh, he uh, he associated some spiritual power to himself mm -hmm. and that is quite common among some of the Shia sects there is different sects in the Shia by the way yeah. and there is still a sect still believing uh, believing in al Hakim's spiritual power mm -hmm. they still pilgrim to Egypt today and they call Bohra mm -hmm. they are based in India and Pakistan Muslims Shia mm -hmm. based in India and Pakistan mm -hmm. and those who paid uh, and uh, renovated the two mosques of Al Hakim Bagrullah and Al Akmar Mosque in Maza Street. Um, and they're still maintaining the mosques until today, especially in Al Hakim Mosque. And they come in a big number uh, occasionally for celebrating and program. So that's exactly the Al Hakim Mosque, which is one of the largest mosques and one of the oldest mosques in Cairo. Mm -hmm. So, which is uh, that will be the second largest one after Amr Amr ibn As Mosque, mm -hmm. Al Hakim Bagrullah. And uh, the, it's unique. It's unique because it's very humble decoration. It's not richly decorated, decorated like many other mosques, like the Citizen Mosque, which is also called Muhammad Ali Mosque. Yeah. Right. What about the type of culture that uh, the Fatimites uh, have inflicted uh, on the Egyptian culture, and how important is it? Did Egyptians acquire any uh, different uh, traits uh, from the Fatimites? And there is one of the biggest impacts of the of the. Ottoman, sorry, of the Fatimite cultures in Egypt is uh, the saints or awliya mm -hmm. and the different like shrines which is built for that. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to build lots of shrines named after family members of Prophet Muhammad yeah. and, uh, and uh, the, the reason, it's, it seems to be like a religious reason but there was a hidden political reason behind because mm -hmm. they introduced themselves as the saints uh, like from the lineage of Muhammad mm -hmm. and they introduced themselves as the perfect ruler because they inherit the spiritual mm -hmm. importance of Muhammad as well mm -hmm. and by in, uh, highlighting the importance of the family members of Muhammad and building shrines and encouraging pilgrims to go on pilgrim to that in different like occasions uh, that's in a direct way associating importance to themselves mm -hmm. because if they will respect if you will come to respect and celebrate the birth of many of Muhammad وسلم, like uh, members family members and because of the spiritual importance of them and when they introduce themselves as descent from Muhammad that's how they will get credit from mm -hmm. from that importance and they'll get a political power as well and uh, this survived until today and this in a way, yeah, in that's, a way, yeah, that's uh, yeah, still, still survived uh, until mm -hmm. today. Yeah. But what about the end of this dynasty? So the end of the, this dynasty came by uh, Salah al din mm -hmm. which is he was by the way Salah al din He was <coughs> the prime minister of the last Fatimid rulers. Mm -hmm. The Fatimid, the last Fatimid rulers, they became very weak and very young kings, by the way, and have almost no experience. Mm -hmm. And the palace or the palace guards and the palace servants and ministers and high officials, they were controlling politics and they were fighting each other and there was, it was a very, a very bad time in the last. The period. traditional way of uh, of losing power and of losing everything. You know, and and that's very much associated with any with any power uh, uh, like. Uh, transferred by blood by genetics mm -hmm. because they tend to keep the blood and genetics uh, in the family by the inner marriage mm -hmm. and from scientific point of view the inner marriage results into the weaken the bloodline of the dynasty mm -hmm. and that happens in all of the all over the history all over the history of mankind mm -hmm. and even in ancient Egypt as well when you think about how many dynasties ruled in ancient Egypt yeah. there was a very powerful king in the beginning and then gradually it declines because of the inner marriage. this is going to be inshallah another topic in another day in another episode of our breakfast show mr sanya best thank you very much for your input sir and happy you like to be with you too. thank you for coming i guess uh, this brings us uh, to the end of this edition of the breakfast show my name is dina hasim at all the pleasure to talk with me and uh, nermin nabdurrahman of course my usual partner thank you very much dina thank you it was fun having you with us as usual dina i've enjoyed my time tomorrow is another day with another crew stay tuned on the online tv international hours for more and for more details please log on to www.nileinternational.net thanks for watching